Hello and welcome to the Haywire's video blog for Thursday, June 16th, 2011. Keeping animals in confined spaces, like a cage or a tank or a pen or a stable or your house, you can argue that this is justified when the intention is to produce food or labor. But what about when the whole point of the confinement is just companionship or admiration. It takes an extreme, almost barbaric, willful disconnect for someone to keep a bird that's, that, that's able to fly in a tiny little cage and yet act like they're doing it out of love. Or when you go to the zoo and you see a bunch of people lined up, ooing and eyeing, going, oh, oh, isn't it cute, in front of a display when the poor creature is basically in jail. What does this say about the way we love and form attachments? Why is it that our need to keep something close to us and to have ac constant access to it causes a kind of denial where we're willing to actively oppose uh, the object of our companionship's true nature? What does this say about the way we treat each other? People that we like to keep close to us, like romantic partners, family, friends, business and creative partners. How much are we willing to repress uh, them, repress their being true to their own nature? Now, on the one hand, if you say keep a dog or a cat in your home, um, you are confining it for sure, but you're also keeping it safe from natural predators. You're taking care of it in a way that nature never would. How much do we, in the name of taking care of something, actually oppress the things that we love and want to keep close? And on the flip side, how much are we willing to have our own true nature controlled and dominated and opposed and repressed and uh, disputed by others around us who we draw to ourselves. To give this idea some actual weight, I've included some zoo and pet store footage. And what's really striking in both cases is the repetitive movement, uh, how nonstop these animals are going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in a space that is obviously too small for them and inadequate uh, to provide for them. And so yet we go and we admire how the animals look, which I find to be a completely, um, actually ugly, uh, that, we're, that we're able to do that, that we're willing to do that, that we contrive circumstances where it's possible to do this without questioning ourselves or the welfare and well-being of the object of our admiration.